what she wanna do. Lower to the grave, tell you like it is to your face. She don't play. play. Every chick down for it all, I know that she a boss. No competition, no loss. From the Midwest to the A, all them got you tuning in, no delay. Ooh, get you right every time. Keep you laughing on a dime. Tell you truth, no lies. So you can live your best life. Cover all topics, no limits. Got some for your mama and your children, no holding back. No gimmicks, coming on strong, get straight to business. Oh, yeah. What she wanna do. Lit life. Hey, it's your girl Autumn, and I welcome you back to the Lit Life Podcast, where I encourage you to live your life autonomously. Welcome to season season five. Uh, I'm happy to be here. It's kind of crazy because I didn't really know how I was going to get here or exactly how season five was going to play out. Um honestly, until like a day ago, like less than 24 hours ago. Um, so first, I just want to welcome, if if this is your first time listening to the Lit Life podcast, this is a great time to kind of um, get a feel for who I am and uh, what what's to come. Uh, seasons one through four, was packed with uh, a lot of great guests so and and just great time so if you have a chance to go back and listen to um and listen to the first uh 69 well actually it's it's more than that with the bonus episodes but um if you get a chance to go back to listen to it it's, it's some great times and some fun times but um i think that this season is going to be um, something special for me. So I'll, and I'll get into that uh, shortly. But May 2nd was year, was my second year mark of the Lit Life podcast. And guys, I had like this whole big old plan to do a live show and all this, that, and the other. But it just wasn't like, I just wasn't feeling it. And I didn't have a well-rounded plan um, as to to what I wanted out of it. And I think that a part of who I am is just like, I have to, things have to jump out at me sometimes. Or like, say for instance, if I'm going to the mall, I, I already know what I'm going to the mall to get. If I go to the mall to just kind of window shop or just to get out of the house or something, I'll never buy anything because I'm not there to buy anything. Like something literally has to jump out at me. So I don't even know if that like kind of made sense as to, to what I'm getting to, but it's just like, I couldn't, I didn't have a I just felt like I didn't have a, a definite plan or overall uh, overall view of what I wanted my listeners to get out of that live show and actually to get out of uh, season five. So again, I'll, I'll talk about that uh, a little bit more in depth as I go along. But yeah, two two years has been great. Um, for for the the listeners that come back every week or you know for the listeners who whenever you just get a chance to listen to me or to see me on YouTube or whatever I just really appreciate you all and for those of you who have been in my corner and been pushing me to continue on this this podcast journey not that I needed that much of a push but sometimes you just need a little bit more motivation um I appreciate y'all so that's that on that. Uh, if you heard episode 69, you guys know that I started a new position. I think it's been about three weeks now and um, it's been really good. Uh, it, it's it's kind of different uh, working for a, 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 a company or an organization that is not like U.S. based, like I'm, I'm like 
this I'm more of a minority now that I'm American, <laughs> that I'm like in the United States than just me being an African-American female. So it's it's um, I, I haven't I have not. I, I don't feel any like challenges just yet. But again, it's just been three weeks. I'm in, you know, still in training, actually still kind of doing orientations and, and things of that nature as well. Um, the culture is a lot different than what I'm used to, but um, so far so good. So that's great. All right. So if you know anything uh, about the show, you already know what's coming up next. So if you're new to the show, again, welcome. Um, this part of the show is everyone's favorite part of the show, and it's called the Shut the Fuck Up Award. And the Shut the Fuck Up Award is something that's probably going to stay around forever. It's basically uh, me or or whoever my guests are at that time or you to yourself or whatever while you're listening to this. Uh, if you, if there's a person, if there's a movement, if there's a group of people, if there is whatever, um, and you want to tell them to shut the fuck up, this is a great time to do it. So today, and, and I, I'm, I'm kind of glad, let me just throw this out there. I'm kind of glad that, um, even though we're still in a pandemic, you know, things are, are trying, let's just say as far as the news is concerned, things are kind of going back to normal. Um, even with like the elections and things like that, you know, a lot of things, excuse me, except for the, except, except for like the, um, di you know, like them speaking on like future elections, like for next year, for Senate and all that stuff, everything has kind of calmed down. So I, I finally have like a shut the fuck up award that's not related to politics or COVID or any vaccines or anything of that nature. So anyways, today's shut the fuck up award. So somebody and and we this happens probably not as much as like the the um the the twitter debates that like people just run into the ground like about relationships and all that type of shit but this one does come around probably uh once maybe twice a year we'll get to this so somebody tweeted something on the lines of um you know y'all never would have survived old twitter because you're soft that's basically what she said so then <laughs> then you had people who like literally went in on her because she said that folks be out here soft having sucker attacks about tweets. I think it's the think pieces. I think it's the people who do the think pieces uh, who I really want to tell to shut the fuck up to because it's just like everything is not that deep. I understand that even though I I understand that it's hard it, that you can't really make the jokes or you know, be politically correct in speaking to people the way that maybe we did 10 years ago because there's a heightened um, awareness of, of kind of sensitivity, right? Like you, you do want to be sensitive of people. That's never really stopped the jokes you know what i'm saying so but i get it i don't know i i get both sides of it but her saying that and then all of the stuff all of the people that tweeted at her and the things that they said to her 
kind of proved a point. I mean, this really was just about old Twitter, uh, the way we carried ourselves on old Twitter. Let me tell y'all what I miss about old Twitter. What I'm really, really, truly miss about old Twitter is how there was so much less porn there because Tumblr was a thing. So there, you know, you knew the Twitter followers or whatever that you had who also had a Tumblr page that may have had um, explicit pornographic um, uh, uh, visuals, you know, pictures, videos, um, writings, uh, pieces of art, all of that stuff. That's the stuff that they did on Tumblr back then. And so Twitter was pretty clean. Like it, it wasn't, it just wasn't as um, a sexual in nature um, as it is now. And even you, even with you like muting certain accounts or, you know, not following certain people, there's always going to be people, be people that will retweet it or that will like it. And Twitter shows you when somebody likes something. So that's kind of what I miss about it. I mean, I'm not, um, I, I'm never going to be the one to hate on porn. I just don't always want that to be a part of my Twitter experience. So I don't know. I think I I, I kind of just want the whole uh, old Twitter versus new Twitter to kind of just shut the fuck up at this. The, the, the ones that are making the, the debate because it's just <sighs> things will never be the way that they used to be. And, and again, to a certain extent, that's OK. Um, but I get where I get where she was coming from. So anyways, that's the shut the fuck up for a war for today. Getting into season five. <laughs> so like I said, I literally had no idea what I was going to do for season five. Now, the, the, I can't say I didn't have any idea. I started planning for season five some weeks back, um, actually before season four ended. And the things that I was planning for it, I just wasn't like super hype about it, right? Like I just wasn't, I, I couldn't really bring myself to like, start scheduling folks to come on and I don't know it's just I don't know if it, it was just like a, I felt like I was kind of at a crossroads or something and then um honestly I can say that yesterday I went out on a walk just a leisure walk to you know get some some fresh air and I decided to listen to a podcast and I, I haven't been listening to as nearly as many podcasts as um as I did you know like even just a few months ago but I decided to listen to stakes is high podcast and that is with um Jones and TC but TC this particular episode that I was listening to TC is out he's uh, about to get married so congratulations to him um but Jones brought in King K from the Drunken Nights podcast which is another podcast that I just absolutely love like those guys are hilarious if you've never listened to them uh three drunken nights you need to look them up so um anyway so I'm listening to these guys chat and I just start uh, they, they talked about a, a bunch of different things and I just started listening to like I mean like keywords just started like popping out at me just random keywords and i didn't know what i was gonna do with these keywords but i i took my phone out i opened the notepad and i just started writing like just certain words and i don't want to say them all because <laughs> i don't want to say them all because i want them to kind of be a surprise as we go along so anyways um i'm writing all these words down and i get uh, uh, not even just the words that were coming to me from that particular podcast, but words, just other random words that maybe I've seen or, you know, whatever. 
however. So I ended up probably with about 15 words. And also coming from Stakes is High podcast, there was a segment on there about how people reach their, how people may feel like they've reached their max in certain things and then they're not interested anymore. And someone said something about, you know, something may not be as challenging and things of that nature. So the whole like challenge, it, it, it made, that conversation made me think about this podcast and the types of things that I initially wanted to do with the podcast and what I have done and what I can do and what I want to challenge myself to do. So I have decided for season five to do, well, it was already 10 episodes, but to do 10 episodes related to 10 words. So each episode will be about just a random word. And it's and it it could be like uh you never really know what you're gonna get when you listen to it. So I mean it could be something that can turn into something funny or it could turn into something serious or like just because you see the word doesn't necessarily mean you're going to get what you initially think of when you see that word. So today's word, oh, let me tell y'all how I picked the words. <laughs> I picked the words. There's this little like um, picker wheel. And I think I've used it on podcast happy hour. Uh, so I put all the words in the little wheel. And I wrote down all the 10 dates that I should have episodes out, which this also is a great idea because it's going to help keep me on task. And I just hit the picker and whatever came out of, you know, out of those 15 words, whichever one came out is the one that I said that I would talk about for these episodes. And I just wrote them down and I said, you will do this. Like, you're going to stick to this. I know this may not be like extremely easy, you know what I'm saying? Like I know this part, this is going to challenge me. So <laughs> today's word, the first word of season five, guys, is stoner. <laughs> and I'm laughing because I'm just, I don't know, it's funny. So Here's where I got that word from. There was, again, it's always Twitter, right? Is it always Twitter? It's almost always Twitter. So I was on Twitter a few days ago, last week maybe, and a young lady tweeted, uh, and I'll actually say who she is. Uh, her at is at Martine F. Pierre, Lioness of Marketing. She tweeted, the cannabis space is in dire need of Black creators that don't represent that stoner culture. I have no beef with stoner culture. It's just not reflective of me or my black friends who smoke. So I retweeted her and basically said, well, I, I asked, I, I guess I didn't really understand like what stoner culture was. Like I, I have my idea of what a stoner is and I've had, you know, and I know what culture means, but I just like, I couldn't, make the connection as to what it was she was really trying to say because it kind of it kind of came off like in a negative sense like if you're enjoying your weed if you smoke a lot and you're and you're enjoying your weed that's not really what we need in and you're sharing this content but we need different I don't know but I read through like the quote tweets, like and a lot of people were asking the same thing. And then it made me think to myself, like, first, first and foremost, like, am I a stoner? And I don't see, I don't 
feel like that's who I am, right? So, of course, I said, let me get on the Google. Let, let me see, like, what officially what people think of a stoner is. And and for first, I, maybe I'll put, maybe I'll say this. It's like, when I think of the word stoner, it's kind of weird because I never initially think of Black people. I don't know if it's just the word. I don't know if there's a Black version of the word. I just don't feel like I just don't relate it. I don't, re I'm not gonna look at somebody, a black person that I know that smokes like heavily, he which is what I would feel a stoner is, is somebody that just smokes and just, just be out. Like, I don't know, just like so super duper high and like all the time, I guess that's kind of what I kind of thought, like a, a wake up, you know, like a 24 hour smoker. I don't know. I guess that's kind of what I thought, but I never, I never, if I, if I knew somebody like that, I'm not going to be like, dog, you're a stoner. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't, it just doesn't, those, I don't know. It just doesn't, but the flip side of that is I don't even think about white people when it comes to weed it's that that's kind of weird like I don't know even just saying it like I don't that's not my first thought like uh so it's like I don't know this whole stoner word is kind of like in the middle of all of that right I don't know I don't know so anyways I was like and then you think of the movies right yeah you have stuff like I don't know, like how high I, I wouldn't have called that a stoner movie. I mean, I because maybe just because I just wouldn't have used that particular word, right? Like I just, I don't know. Anyways, when you look up the definition of stoner from the Webster dictionary, it says a person who habitually uses drugs or alcohol. I don't even think of, you know what I mean? Like, I don't think of like, quote unquote, drugs and alcohol when I think of the word stoner. Like, I don't know. I might be going like, just all over the place with this, but just just rock with me here. So I said, you know what? I, again, I the, the actual word, I don't, I just, uh, I don't even know, really know what to say. So anyways, I, I started just browsing the internet or whatever. And I was like, you know what? Let me, let me, let me look up some articles that actually uses the word stoner, right? And it's still more like not us. You know what I'm saying? Like when I, when I, when I Google stuff like, I, I don't know. It, it just wasn't us. So anyways, I get to, I, I figured this would be a fun thing to do because I found a couple, actually a couple of articles and they are kind of, I mean, they're by this website called Civilized. What is it? Civilized Life, I guess. Um, and there was, <laughs> let me go back to the other one first. There was a an article that they that someone had written called "How to Like Marijuana but Avoid Stoner Culture," and there's a picture of a white man with dreads or locks. Uh, uh, I call mine locks. I don't know. Um, with a joint, who just looks like hella high again. I wouldn't have expected to see like me or, you know what I'm saying? Like uh, with this aligned with this particular word. So I was going through and I was like, oh, you know, scrolling through and just kind of, you know, looking at the article. And then it said, um, as cannabis becomes more widely accepted across North America and across the world, the negative stereotypes of stoner culture will fade over time. But negative stereotypes of stoner culture is um, uh, hyperlinked 
because there's another article from this particular website that says how to avoid sounding like a stoner. There's a picture of a young lady who has on, I don't know, she has on like a uh, the little green leprechaun hat that has a uh, marijuana leaf on it and she's blowing smoke out, her, out of her mouth and she has on blue shades and she just looks so Woodstock and again, nobody that looks like me. So, but I thought, I thought the article itself was ca- kind of funny. So I, they give you seven ways to avoid sounding like a stoner. Let me get these to y'all. I want y'all to tell me, like live tweet me this shit because I need to know how y'all feel about this. Number one, call we, quote unquote, either cannabis or marijuana instead of one of its many nicknames. Also, avoid using typical stoner slang words such as wacky tobacky, toke up, Sticky icky and phrases such as I'm so blazed, killer buds, I've got I've gotten I've got cotton mouth, pack a bowl, let's chill out. I love Mary Jane. So I'm trying to figure out again if if I am <laughs> If I were to align myself with whatever this stoner culture is, I I wouldn't align with that, this one right away. Because I think the only thing in here that I've ever really said was pack a bowl. But I'm not just out here like, I mean, why would that, why would saying pack a bowl be a stoner so, you see what I'm saying? Like, what did the, I, who says wacky tobacco anymore? Do people say that? Like, I feel like I don't even. Uh, maybe I've seen it in a movie or some some shit. Like, I, all of these things are not related to anything that me or my friend would say in the first place. Number two, avoid calling everyone dude or man regardless of their age or sex. That's, that's, I don't, people who, there's people who do this and they don't have anything to do with cannabis or anything. Like, I don't understand, like, eh, okay, whatever, next. Number three. Don't announce to everyone that it's 420 every time the clock says so, because only the most dedicated stoners do that. (laughs) What? Like, I don't, again, I I knew I would get a good laugh out of this. And and guys, like I, I skimmed this article, but when I saw that there were like actual bullet points, I decided not to read them. I wanted to like give y'all a... A live reaction, which is why this is funny. Um, again, nothing that I particularly uh, particularly take part of and uh, take part in, right? Like I just this is like so to me again. So if I'm going back to the tweet, it's like I don't even see us being a part of stoner culture so any type of content that we make in regards to cannabis marijuana whatever it is like the the ups the ups of it the downs of it uh the i just want to smoke a record of it uh i'm more creative you know or i'm trying to get rid of my anxiety and depression or i'm trying to you know i'm going to use it uh medically for whatever reason like i don't see any of that as far as we are concerned being aligned with the way that you know, like white people see stoners. You see what I'm saying? Like, I don't, so anyways, that was number one. 
three, number four, avoid speaking in a slow, monotone voice and dragging out words or entire sentences because people will think you're stoned all the time. Number five, don't ask other people where your personal belongings are. If you can't find your cell phone, car keys, or other personal item, look for it in silence for as long as <laughs> for as long as possible before asking for help. Or you will probably hear some some comments about sounding like a stoner. What is happening here? That was actually pretty funny. <laughs> Cause that's because that's probably something I do. I, I ain't gonna lie. I'm going to, but it's not to avoid. It would probably be to avoid me like trying, like showing exactly how high I am. It probably would be. I, I'm not gonna lie. Okay, that one. I okay. Number five. That's probably me. Like I'm gonna look around and try to figure things out before I'm like. Where are these things at? It, you know what I'm saying? So, okay. Okay, I'll give y'all that. Number five, I'll give y'all that. Number six, avoid verbalizing any internal thoughts you're having, particularly if you're trying to make a decision about something. Mm, I, I, again, I, this is all like stuff you see in a movie. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is not real life stuff. I, I don't know. Number seven, don't let yourself laugh out loud about something you saw or heard about hours earlier. Having a personal giggle fit will usually give people the impression that's that stoned and that you're, uh, they didn't even do that right, that you're stoned and that your mind is wandering. I ha this had to be an article for just like some sort of like entertainment because it was really stupid like I so basically all I'm saying is I do not feel as if me and my friends or people even people just within my circles or in within the podcast community that I follow align with this stoner culture in the first place. So I don't know, again, I don't know if she just meant like people who are, people who have um, um, creative outlets that speak about how they feel when they consume or like, if you know, there's some podcasts out here that literally they just like smoke and talk about anything, which I but the, and they let it be known. But for real, for real, like there's a whole lot of podcasts that do this that you just don't know are doing these things in the background. You know what I'm saying? Like, so I don't know. I, I just what y'all think? I, I would like to know. Um, what you guys think, what what you would think stoner culture would mean and what it would mean to be a stoner, whether you smoke or you don't smoke or whatever. Just, I just want to know what you feel. So I'm going to wrap the episode up. I'm smiling because I think I did good <laughs> with my random word. And again, it's going to be very random words. I really have absolutely no idea how, like, I, what I'm going to say about them. Just like, again, I, I got the word stoner and I'm like, why did I even write that word down? But I think I did good with it, right? So I, I have no idea what direction these are going to be. Um, if there's a word, I'm going to put this out there. If there's a word that you would like to hear me talk about or how I feel about this particular word or the meaning of this word or anything like that, let me know. Maybe I'll throw in a bonus episode. Maybe I'll switch out one of the words that I have and I'll do it that way. But it, either way, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. So before I go, 
I wanted to say um, shout out to, of course, podcast podcast happy hour. And again, if you're new here and you're not here because of podcast happy hour, I need you to go to YouTube and I need you to search podcast happy hour. Um, actually, there'll be a link in the show notes uh, with all of the people who are on there, which is Audrey from All Tales Pod, Jay Book from Jay's Quick Three, Tamara, Tamara to the Break of Dawn podcast, um, and Chris with Shenanigans with Friends, who is also with All Docked Up. So, um, and I'll have the actual like link in the show notes that will get you to the actual um, YouTube playlist. I feel rusty, guys. Like I probably shouldn't shouldn't like not record my own shit for more than like two weeks because I just feel really rusty and I feel like I'm like tripping over my words or whatever but y'all gonna get this y'all gonna get this episode because it just is what it is but anyways um so yes podcast happy hour it's uh five solo podcasters who come together once a month to bring a part of their show. Part of the show that I bring is the Shut the Fuck Up Award because it's just so much fun. Um, and you have to tune in to see what everybody else uh, brings to, to the table. We are typically live on YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook. And it's typically around a third or you know, sec uh, third or fourth weekend of the month. This month, it'll be on uh, May, uh, Saturday, May 22nd. Um, and I believe it's 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So 9, 8, and 6. <sighs> All right. I think that's going to do it. Uh, again, I appreciate y'all tuning in and hopefully the season goes the way that I need it to go. And I hope y'all enjoy this. And I'm always open for any feedback. So let me know until you hear me again. Peace.